Good afternoon, everyone. Growing levels of activity across all geothermal sites in Iceland, specifically the circled area here, all of Iceland's major volcanoes are showing unusually high levels of activity here on the map. Quick jump back into history, Mount Laki, 1785, but you'll see five of these volcanoes right in the Indonesian archipelago. Two of the largest eruptions in Earth's recent history, 1257 and 1458, right at the bottom of grand solar minimums. And a lot of that ash was deposited in the southern hemisphere. But like clockwork, when a grand solar minimum commences, a huge volcanic eruption occurs blocking out sunlight, dropping Earth's temperature. And that 540 AD, that's the late antique little ice age. Now we got Tambora and Somalis next to each other. So you just need to ask yourself which one of these is going to go off as we commence into our new grand solar minimum starting right now. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to ADAPT2030. In the news as of late, since February of this year, all the way until at least up to the first week of May, growing levels of activity at all geothermal sites, and this happens to be across all of Iceland, showing greater activity than any time in the recent past, yet the geophysicists will say, oh, don't worry, earthquake swarms and increased geothermal activity. You know, it happens from time to time at varying levels. Specifically, they're talking about this area that's circled on the Icelandic map. And now there's been another uptick where all of Iceland's major volcanoes are showing unusually high levels of activity. Most famous would be Katla. Look here on the map, Bartabunga, Hekla. You've heard these names before. You've seen them through history. And Hekla is gearing up for another eruption. When these blow, it absolutely affects agriculture across Europe and into Central Asia. Remember, when air travel was restricted due to an eruption out of Iceland as well. So all we have to do is look back in history and we start to see where these major eruptions were, the explosive eruptions in the last 2,000 years. Notice that Indonesia and Vanuatu area, Papua New Guinea, five of those are centered out of the nine in that area of the planet. Now, in Tall Bloke's Talk Shop, he has a really good article there, the most accurate and precise reconstruction of historic volcanic sulfate emissions in the Southern Hemisphere and the two largest volcanic eruptions in Earth's recent history, 1257, 1458. Charting these out, you're going to see it's right at the near bottom or bottom of a grand solar minimum, wolf minimum, sporer minimum. And what's interesting, the deposition of the ash during those two huge eruptions was Antarctica and Tambora, the year without a summer, more ash went down south in the Southern Hemisphere than it did end up in the Northern Hemisphere, which really cooled Northern Hemispheric temperatures, although the ash was deposited in the south. Now taking a look side by side here, Tambora on the right and Somalis, they're only one island separated in these two most explosive volcanic eruptions in Earth's timeline over the last 2000 years sit right next to each other. We look at Mount Tambora dropping the temperature of the entire planet by at least one C. Now we get into rewriting the entire history of volcanic forcing, really how much influence this has on blocking out sunlight and dropping Earth's temperature. If we take a look at the most explosive volcanoes, you can drop those right on a line with the grand solar minimums. The red lines, those are grand solar minimums. And specifically taking a look at the Somalis eruption, this is how much Earth's temperatures cooled due to that one volcano. Looking back in time at the solar activity and the climate, you can map out when the grand solar minimums were. It's hard to see through all the noise, so let's clean that up right there. And as we're dropping into grand solar minimums, these eruptions occur like clockwork. And you might ask yourself, what's that outlier over at 540 over there? Oh, that's a late antique little ice age. That was the one that actually collapsed the Wei Dynasty. And taking a look at the dynasty collapses, you'll find the volcanic eruptions also accompany the temperature drops on this same timeline, going back a thousand years in time. Now it's predicted that we're going into another grand solar minimum starting right now, and the intensification ramp up is gonna begin 2018 and 19. Right through 2021, we get an incredible intensification of canceling waves on the sun around 2020 or 2021. So my question to you is, knowing that we're entering into another grand solar minimum at the moment, it's going to intensify rapidly. 
Which one of these volcanoes is going to go off and start blocking out our sunlight and lower Earth's temperature first? Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Geodesic domes are a way to protect any type of agriculture from outside forces, whether it be temperature, hail to a certain extent, but also volcanic ash. Foodforliberty.com offering grow domes from 202 up to 775 square feet with a full nine and a half feet of headroom. And you can layer that due to the geodesic shape. You can see a lot of different information online. The cover provides R3 insulation and helps keep the interior warm, thereby extending growing seasons a month on either side.